My remarks will be rather brief this afternoon. And if you ask me why, it's because I don't want to speak longer than I'm going to speak. <laughs> but I hope that they will have encouragement within them. Psalm 23, we talk a lot about, but when's the last time you heard it read? Or when's the last time that you read it? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wouldn't you say that those words are given because God wants us to be comforted by him? I want to speak this afternoon about God's comfort about the strength that he gives us. You'll remember, well, even if you just studied history, that back in uh, even the medieval days of Europe, but further back than that to the Eastern nations, that they would many times have a tower built for defense purposes. And even when they built city walls, many times within the city there would be a tower as a place to retreat as last resort. Sometimes, though, they would just simply build a tower, which would be the place they would take refuge. I remember seeing one of those in Northern Ireland built out on a point where they could look out into the North Sea because they could watch for the Vikings coming that way and have time to hide. It was just a tower all by itself. Well, it's interesting how God took that which was most familiar in the minds of these people and keeping in mind what we noted in Psalm 23. Psalm 18 in verse 2, here's some amazing words. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. <coughs> we seek to comfort one another as mere human beings as best as we know how. We seek to try to help one another when we're in problems. It's charged upon us to do so. It's part of the benevolent spirit of the children of God. But when we have done all we could do, one human to another, no matter how well we follow the word of God in doing it, we can only do so much. So when all else fails, human assistance falls short, there's still one to shield us from the darts of, the, of Satan. We talk a lot of times about the book of Job. And James, by inspiration, referred to it and says, Have you heard of the patience of Job? Patience there meaning endurance. Doing right, even though you must endure the pain to do right. And the perfect example of that is Jesus Christ, who bore all that he did to do right. And that right in that case was to save us from our sins. And you think of it for a moment. Job's wife, she said, curse God and die. 
He had three folks coming to him that certainly considered him their friends, but they were very worthless friends. They couldn't really help him. Who stayed by him? Who was there all along? That book's recorded in the Bible to teach us. Well, God was with him. He blessed him. Job 42, 12. Perhaps there's no verse in the scripture that tells us in greater eloquence than does Paul speaking to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, 16 through 18. Paul admitted, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. That was in his first defense in Rome. Then he went ahead to write to Timothy, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. Can you find greater words of encouragement anywhere? When you think that's, that's said just for me, well, just for me, yes, just for faithful members of the church. Nobody outside of Christ can truthfully make those statements. We sang a song a moment ago about His grace reaches us, His favor reaches us. Well, if that's not a favorable statement about us, I don't know what is. And the 23rd Psalm is not a statement of favor for God's children, I don't know what is. In fact, when you start talking like that, you can think of no telling how many scriptures that favor us to provide strength and sustenance, spiritually speaking. When the Lord chose his apostles, he had uh, some that were closer to him than others. Peter, James, and John. But where were they with him in the garden as he prayed? Well, they could stay awake. When you think of Who was with him? Why, the Father was with him. In Psalm 60 and verse 4, we have what we could call the victory song of the saints of God. Thou hast given us a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. And then Paul writes to the church at Rome in Romans 8, verse 37, affirming that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. People have had these thoughts in their minds for years. They've written poetry about it. Some of it's been set to music. But I don't think any gospel song takes hold of that thought mighty and clear it is concerning we're more than conquerors than this hymn by a fellow by the name of J.E. Rankin you'll recognize it God be with you till we meet again beneath his wings protecting hide you daily manna still provide you where life's perils thick confound you Put his arms unfailing around you. God be with you until we meet again. We started out with the psalm, Psalm 23, as a psalm of comfort and strength, for such it is to the faithful child of God. Then we turn to what was commonplace in the cities of that day and time, to where God used it to say, this is what I am to you the high tower. God is able, so Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask 
or think. Now let that settle in. Above all we ask and all we can think, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly those things. Isn't it good to know that as you're pouring out your heart to God in prayer or as we worship Him as we've done today, God knows far, far more about your intention to desires and your hopes and aspirations and your problems. And He understands them as thoroughly as it's possible to be understood. And we have another song, Jesus Knows, Jesus Cares, and that's so true. God didn't care, why would Jesus even come? If we're courageous in the doing of heaven's will, then there's no reason for us to ever fear being alone. And we might exclaim with the, with the hymn writer, what a friend we have in Jesus. And we don't ever need to lose sight of him. But to keep our gaze permanently fixed on him. The writer of Hebrews said this way. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12.2. Well as we look round about us. We see all sorts of boisterous and turbulent seas of life. And all that goes on and all that stuff. To keep us agitated and whatever. But you know those things don't make any difference if we love the truth and live by it because he's always walking beside us and he gently beckons and that would be I would say it would fit well Mark 650 as to how he beckons be of good cheer it is I be not afraid I read a long time ago in the Gospel Advocate an editorial by Brother B.C. Goodpasture. And of course, he died in 1977, so he was just a boy back in the 1890s and early 1900s. He said it was his job to go down to the spring and bring back a couple of buckets of water. People sometimes forget about how that had to be done, either from a well or a stream, but it did. He said, I was just a little boy. I said, I had to walk quite a ways from the house. I said, it was down and up and through the woods. They would always ask me to go just before dark. And said, I could imagine all sorts of blue bears and everything out there in the shadows and the screech owls and whatever else that could make the hair crawl up the back of your neck. He said, but I will go because it was my duty to go and I would go get the water. And said, nothing ever erased my fear any more than looking around. And Daddy would be there and said, I'll take the buckets. So regardless of personal sorrow, national depression, or what kind of international chaos there'll be, we find refuge in God's high tower. In 1900, Wilfred Owen wrote of vain citadels that are not walled. But God's children are hedged about by the Almighty's love and concern for us. Job 1 verse 10. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. If you're subject to the Lord's invitation, we invite you to come while we stand and sing. <laughs>